So there are different kinds of probes that have different um, frequencies, and they're used for different applications. So if you look, you know, if you actually one good ultrasound machine to look at is if you head down to the emergency room, they usually have you know, an ultrasound machine with every probe that you would want. They've got linear probes, they have convex probes, they have transvaginal probes. They are all designed to have um, different properties to image different tissues in a specific way. So one thing that we're going to talk about here is the linear probe. Um, it's got a large footprint or a large surface area, and you can see the linear probe here. It's the kind of long, skinny probe um, and has a, a nice large pr footprint. It's a high-frequency probe. The higher the frequency allows for greater resolution, um, but you do lose penetration and depth to your imaging. So that's why a, a linear probe tends to be good at uh, imaging for vascular applications, for lines, for soft tissue, because you get very good resolution at a very shallow depth, and that's where the uh, and that's why that it works that way. So there's a nice view of a linear probe here, long skinny probe with a large footprint, showing um, uh, neck for a, I'm assuming for a central line placement with this being the uh, IJ right here. So that's the one that you'll commonly see used down in the emergency room for those applications, or you guys may use that in the ICU. Um, convex probe, on the other hand, is the one that you're more commonly going to see on labor and delivery or with echocardiogram, where you're using a, uh, a probe that has lower frequency. Um, it's a smaller contact area with the patient, a smaller footprint, um, but it allows for deeper imaging. Um, and so the resolution is not going to be exactly the same as it's going to be in the soft tissue, but um, it's going to allow for deeper structure. So there's a nice um, echo picture here, and it shows that this, there's the convex probe, the way that the sound comes out, as opposed to being strong, focused, linear, directly straight down below the skin. This is going to give you a nice, wider, deeper uh, application, um, but you have uh, you know, a difference in the amount of resolution. But you can still get very nice, nice uh, views. So this is what you would typically use for abdominal imaging, right upper quadrant, ultrasound, uh, and obstetrics, and for um, cardiac procedures. Um, so this is a 2D real-time image. So what that is actually called is B-mode. Um, B-mode is basically it's a two-dimensional image in grayscale that basically displays the varying degree of um, uh, reflection in the tissue you are scanning. So as we talked about before in the physics principles, the amount of light that is, uh, amount, I'm sorry, the amount of sound waves that are um, reflected back um, by the tissue based on the properties of that tissue come back to the transducer and produce a grayscale image with everything from sort of very bright, echogenic, almost white appearing to anechoic dark and everything in between. And so that's B mode. It's, it's 2D. It's integrating that as you go. What M mode does is actually is a graphic image that takes, it's basically taking that same 2D image, that same B mode image, with continuous updating. So it's kind of adding another axis to it. And the way it's displayed, as uh, the slide shows, is that the x-axis going across linearly is time, and the y-axis is that constant B mode image that's coming back from what you are scanning. And we're going to have an example of that there. And Doppler flow measures velocity. So it's a way to um, look at blood flow uh, is, is the primary application for, for Doppler. So this is your regular 2D real-time image. This is a right upper quadrant ultrasound looking at uh, uh, some fluid here, which is anechoic, marked as ascites. Um, so again, that's, you know, this is, can be done in a way that is continuous as you're scanning and you're constantly sending sound waves out into different tissues with different um, uh, amounts of penetration and reflection. Um, and you can always also freeze that image and then take a picture and um, stop it and, uh, and go back. Um, so here's an example of M mode. So this is uh, in, a, in cardiac applications. You may see this on labor and delivery. You can get a fetal heartbeat this way too. Um, so it's a graphic image, and you see the graphic image up here. This is your sort of standard 2D B mode image. Um, and if you see the application down here, this is going to be um, time, and the anatomy is here. Uh, and so what you can do is kind of look at changes over time and measure, um, for example, intervals of, of heartbeats um, and, uh, and, and look at uh, other cardiac parameters in that way, heart chambers, walls, valves. Um, but it gives you um, a way to measure the change in that B-mode image over time. And that's really what the M-mode does. Doppler. So this is kind of what you'll see when you turn on the Doppler flow. Usually there's a little button that you can push on the ultrasound machine that, um, that says Doppler or looks like a little uh, uh, sort of little window or pyramid and, and you can actually move that around and, and place that little window on top of a particular area uh, that allows for the detection of flow. They're usually color coded so you'll see there's usually a graph here on the uh, side of the image that shows uh, anything from sort of bright, you know, blue, shades of blue to bright white 
to uh, areas of red up to yellow. And what that is showing is flow away and to the probe. So typically, the typical convention is that, that red um, designates flow towards the ultrasound probe, and blue designates flow away from the probe. So you can kind of get an idea of, of, uh, of what direction flow is going, what might be an artery, what might be a vein, based on what you're scanning, and uh, taking a look at uh, what what lights up and what, what flow is. And as we mentioned before, that does generate additional heat, but also can be very useful information uh, in particular applications, um, line placement, certainly in OB, uh, and, uh, and I'm sure in cardiac applications as well. Other thing that's important to know is having, a ling having lingo down about anatomy and what planes and what anatomic planes are, are you are scanning in. So it's really important to have an idea of what these terms are. This goes back to basic first year medical school anatomy, but it, it always does help. So here are the pictures defining sagittal, coronal, and transverse. So a sagittal really is kind of the mirror image of the body. You get a um, longitudinal plane through the midline, uh, cranial cotton mm -hmm. here, um, symmetric on uh, both sides. Transverse planes um, are as delineated in the, in the midline here, um, kind of looks like the dermatome man. Um, and the coronal uh, images are uh, also um, cranial caudal, but uh, sliced 90 degrees uh, to uh, relative to the sagittal plane. So, other things about the um, the ultrasound. This is we're going to get into some practical applications and nuts and bolts of the equipment. So, every ultrasound probe whether it's a linear probe, a convex probe, a transvaginal probe, have, have a notch or a marking on it. And this is a linear probe here, as you can see again, this is the sort of long, thin footprint. There's a little notch here, there's a little dot. Sometimes it's something that's palpable, that like there's either a notch or like a raised little surface. Sometimes there's a little uh, color-coded button or dot. You know, the one upstairs on the LND has, a, has an orange little dot on that side. It's important to know where that probe is because what that does is it orients your um, probe in your hand to the screen. So that notch, um, that marker, it always corresponds to the left side of the ultrasound screen. So when you look at the ultrasound image on TV, um, whatever, wherever that dot is, is going to portray on the left side of that image. So if you are um, scanning a patient in uh, in the transverse plane and the uh, you know that marker is going to be to the patient's right. Although again, it could be to the patient's left, but you have to just know which side of the image on the screen you're looking at. Um, so again, it's more about which way you're holding the probe. Are you holding it in a way that's, that is going to produce a transverse image uh, or a longitudinal image? So actually, back up to the, um, to the anatomic man for a second. So it's a good way. And if I had an ultrasound probe here, I could um, show you. But again, if you imagine that this was kind of an ultrasound probe and the notch were on this side here, if you are going to be holding it in a way that's going to produce, that's going to interface with the patient's body in a trans, and produce a transverse image, um, you know, that's, that's one thing as opposed to turning it in this direction, which is going to slice um, up and down because of how the sound waves emanate out from the transducer. But the other thing to keep in mind is not only which direction you're holding the probe towards the patient, but which side the notch is on because that's going to correlate with what you see on the screen. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, okay. So keep going. Um, so again, let's see. Yeah, so, and again, how you end up imaging um, depends a little bit on the application you're using. So for example, with a cardiac echo, you're probably going to be on the patient's left side because of the, the anatomic location of the heart and how you're going to need to to scan into the, the chest and almost probably towards the axilla. Um, and you know that's going to be hard to do from sitting on the patient's right. The convention in obstetric ultrasound is to be sitting on the patient's right um, facing their head because you're going to be imaging with your, presuming you're, you know, didn't have ultrasound exposure and you're a dom right-handed dominant person, right? Um, and you're scanning a fetus below you and you have the machine up to your left side. And so your, your orientation is going to be, uh, and the way that you're moving your probe has a little bit to do with where you are sitting relative to the patient. Um, so the most important thing is understanding, um, you know, which direction you're placing the probe against the patient's body to, 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 to create a, an image, um, and how that relates to the image on the screen. Um, does that make sense? I think that sort of sums up what this is trying to say in, in, uh, in, in those slides. Um, image adjustments, depth and gain. So these are the two probably most important buttons you're going to use on the ultrasound machine. So good, you can go to the next one here. So depth um, allows you to sort of hone in on different um, tissues. Um, you know, this again is going to be primarily in a um, 
it, it can be used in any application. Again, I, I don't use linear applications as much. Um, but it's the same thing. If you are looking for a carotid artery, you want to be able to adjust, you know, the or, or your IJ, if you're placing line, you want to be able to adjust to be able to see enough depth to be able to have all the vessels you want to see in view. So you don't want to be too shallow or too deep. Um, same thing in obstetric applications. If you wanted to do an anatomy scan and look at the basic anatomy of fetal parts, you might have the depth setting at one at which you can see, you know, most of the fetus at a 20-week ultrasound. But if you wanted to zoom in and do cardiac views, you're going to adjust your depth so that way you can actually have the heart fill most of your screen. So there's usually a button that, that on the machine that says depth, and it's usually a knob that turns, and you can sort of increase or decrease the, the depth of the image. Um, very easily just by turning. So you want to kind of have an idea of what you are looking at scanning and what your intention and purpose is. So that way you can focus on what you want to focus on. Knowing that as you increase, increase depth and decrease depth, you may change um, varying amounts of your resolution and, and clarity, um, which can also be adjusted as you go. But, um, yeah, and some of that's also dependent on what type of probe you're using. And, you know, um, as we mentioned before, a linear probe, you're only going to be able to get so much depth before you lose resolution. So. Um, it just takes a little bit of a, a familiarity and comfort with scanning and getting used to the probes you're using and how much depth you can, can generate and still get a clean image. So then this is right upper quadrant again because this looks like liver. So um, yes, yeah, so again, if you're trying to get liver in view, which I, um, you can kind of see most of the liver here, what you want to see. Um, and this is a good example, yes, of, of, uh, of too shallow, too deep. Um, so if you are scanning um, too shallow, you're getting a liver, that, that you're getting a portion of the liver, a portion of the object you're attempting to ultrasound, but it's, it's taking up almost the entire screen and you can't see the boundary. So if your intention were to see, you know, the, 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 the most uh, lateral aspect on the right side of the liver, you're, you're blurring this out over here because you're too shallow. You're not able to, to have the, uh, um, that be clear with the amount of depth and resolution you have. Um, the opposite is here, is that you're actually, um, you're too deep, because what you're seeing is the entire liver kind of looks small and focused way up towards the transducer, um, and everything below it is shadowed out, um, because there's not sufficient penetration, or there's too much absorption, or depends on what, what tissue you're scanning. Um, so that's the other, and that's actually one other point about the probe orientation. So I mentioned the dot is, um, the notch or dot is always the left side of the screen. The, the area at the top is always closer to the transducer. So you know, when you put that transducer down, right under the area you're scanning, so is is the top of the is the top of the uh, top of the screen. Left side of the screen is the notch. So does that make sense? Now you can see that this is about the appropriate depth. Too much, too zoomed in, if you want to think of it that way. Too little, so you get too much shadow below. Questions on that? No. Okay. Gain um, is actually adjusting the grayscale, if you want to think of it that way, um, and adjusting the amount of uh, brightness that you see without changing any of the sound dynamics. So it's kind of a, it's, it's playing with um, the, the amount of brightness without changing the power or frequency or any of the other physics elements that would change the image. So usually there's a, a knob that also, that's also for gain. And so you can actually, if you, if you for whatever reason, you know, maybe there's a lot of adiposity or you're, you're you know, that's, that's allowing your image to not be as bright because you have some other scatter or you have some other absorption or something that's, you know, preventing you from getting an ideal image. One thing you can do is adjust the gain. Um, so this, for example, here on the left may be a little too dark. This actually probably is a little too bright. So you want to try and find the amount of gain that allows you to see <coughs> what you need to see. Um, and that's going to be a little different based on the characteristics <coughs> of your patient and the characteristics of the, of the target tissue that you are ultrasounding. Okay. Questions about that? Very good. Um, questions about anything? That went actually uh, faster than I thought it was going to go. All right. Very good. Thanks, everybody.